Hi, this is Hank Hennegraff, president of the Christian Research Institute and host of the Bible Answer Man broadcast with another Hank Unplugged Short. This morning I was reading an article titled Gay Conservatism is a Contradiction in Terms. It is a very profound article written by Carl Truman. And what I found most captivating about the article was actually the picture that preceded it. It's the picture of conservative pundit Dave Rubin alongside his same-sex partner, David Janet. And they're, they're both holding sonograms. They're holding sonograms on either side of a plaque that read, Coming Soon, Baby One, 8, 22, 22, and Baby Two coming, 10, 14, 22. So here are our incredibly good-looking men, same-sex partners, holding sonograms, and the image is actually, it's captivating. And what Carl Truman says about this image is that it plays powerfully to the spirit of our age. Again, you have two attractive, charming young men smiling with delight as they're displaying sonograms of children, as Truman puts it, that they are welcoming into the world. The moral narrative is what we might term, says Truman, an aesthetic one. The visible happiness of the couple is the key. It's the key that plays to the spirit of our age. There is no no larger moral vision by which the picture is to be judged. The moral vision here is that whatever makes modern man or modern woman happy, which which technology makes possible, it has to be good. Truman goes so far as to say that, that reproductive technologies are now being employed to shatter all distinctions between the sexes. Because by using modern technology to conceive of children the burden of mother is finally lifted off of the shoulders of women and thus the last great oppressive division of labor which has existed between men and women has been eradicated. So here you have an image that exonerates same-sex marriage Homosexuality dispenses with the need for differentiated parenting, puts pressure on conservative Christians to embrace the LGBTQ plus agenda, including, by the way, this idea that Leah Thomas, who has now become very famous uh, as a transgender athlete, that she who is really biologically a he, is a, is a trendsetter, is breaking new ground, and is, is therefore, as one article in the paper this morning put it, really in the same category as Jackie Robinson. He broke a barrier, she's breaking a barrier, and therefore they should be hailed as heroes. But seeing this picture... And that's what I want to get back to. Seeing this picture immediately caused me to think about the reality that icons become the argument. A picture becomes worth more than a thousand words, as it were. I think of the tree of life. It is just such an icon. It's an icon that for multitudes has become the argument. 
It's been seen so many times in so many places that people fail to remember that Darwin's tree of life has not only been uprooted by the Cambrian explosion, but the fossil record in general shows no evidence whatsoever for the origin of species by means of common descent and natural selection. By the way, the same thing is true with the ape to man icon. It is viewed by the masses as evidence that humans evolved from apes. You know, you'd hope that uh, mental digestion would improve by, by simply examining the facts, but that hasn't happened. I can still vividly recall the media infatuation with Darwinius Maselli, of course, uh, nicknamed Ida. Uh, this was dubbed the eighth wonder of the world. It was believed to be the link between humans and the rest of the animal kingdom. It was said to be the most important fossil discovery in 47 million years. Well, today, just a decade or so, after all of the hype, all of the sensationalism, all of the sophistry, evolutionary scientists are uniformly convinced that Ida plays no plot whatsoever in human evolution. I guess my point in this Hank Unplugged short is simply to say that the image has become the argument. And that's a very dangerous place to be. Western civilization was founded on the word. Modernity is fixated on the image. One takes a great deal of effort. You have to think, you have to cogitate, you have to wrestle with thoughts. The other is intuitively and sometimes mindlessly embraced. Just this morning, I took a walk and I saw kids waiting for, for the bus. There are probably five or six of them none of them sitting close to one another, each of them sitting on the sidewalk, separated from the others, holding in their hands phones. And I couldn't help but think that the images that they were seeing, probably the images were paramount over articles themselves, but the images that they were seeing were images shaping their worldview. And one of the, the real tragedies of, of technology is that pornography has now been made as readily available as the images that we carry along in those, those little technology devices that we call, call phones. I was going to say iPhones because that's what I have, but, but phones in general. What a time for Christians to commit or recommit themselves to the education of their children, to bring them up in the fear and nurture of God. We've already seen what it means to lose a generation of children. They're now the people in control, the levers of power in Western civilization. We need a reversal of that dire situation. And you can play a part in that. Thanks for tuning in.